In this video, we're going to go over three different reactions that can be used to synthesize esters. The first reaction is an alcoholysis reaction. It could be performed on an acid chloride. That's the best way to do it because it'll give you the best yield. Using an acid chloride and an alcohol, we replace the chloride with an OR group, which converts this to an ester. If you recall from the reactions of acid chlorides, this reaction needs to be done in pyridine solvent. The abbreviation for pyridine is PY. Another way to synthesize an ester is with an SN2 reaction, starting with a carboxylic acid. You can deprotonate the carboxylic acid using a strong base like hydroxide would work really well. And that's gonna give you an anion we call this a carboxylate anion, so it's just had the hydrogen removed from the carboxylic acid group. And that's a really good nucleophile, so you can react it with an alkyl halide, and again, this is SN2, so the negative charge is gonna attack the carbon with the leaving group on it, and this is gonna give us an ester. You do need to keep in mind that because this is an SN2 reaction, there are some limitations to what this alkyl halide looks like. It can't be tertiary. You're going to have a hard time with a secondary alkyl halide because this is a particularly bulky nucleophile. The third reaction that we're going to look at is called the Fischer esterification reaction. This also uses a carboxylic acid. Uh, this is reacting the carboxylic acid with an alcohol, and this requires an acid catalyst. This reaction produces an ester and also makes water. Sometimes in homework problems, they want you to show that water is a byproduct of the reaction. This reaction is actually in equilibrium, uh, even though I almost never remember to draw equilibrium arrows. I'm going to draw the mechanism for this reaction because it's a pretty cool mechanism. And I'm going to use a specific carboxylic acid. We use this propanoic acid. Because this is an acid catalyzed reaction, the mechanism is pretty tedious that um, nucleophilic acyl substitution reactions in acidic conditions are pretty tedious. When you have an acid in the presence of oxygen, as you know, the very first thing that you should always do on your mechanism is use the acid to protonate the oxygen. Once that oxygen gets protonated, we can bring in our alcohol reagent. I'm going to use uh, propanol as my alcohol reagent. The lone pair of electrons on the oxygen are going to attack the carbonyl carbon, and that's going to open up the carbon-oxygen double bond. So our carbon-oxygen double bond is now a carbon-oxygen single bond. The positive charge is no longer on the oxygen because it's got an extra set of electrons on it. The OH group from the carboxylic acid is still there, and we have created a bond to the, uh, between the carbonyl carbon and the oxygen of our alcohol. So I'm going to draw that right there. Now that oxygen is positively charged because it has three bonds on it. So this is our first intermediate. The next step of the reaction, we're going to use a second alcohol molecule to deprotonate that positively charged oxygen. Um, using a lone pair of electrons on the oxygen of that alcohol. We're just going to grab that extra hydrogen, and that's going to give us this molecule starting to look like an ester. And in our next step, so when we used this alcohol to do the deprotonation, that created a protonated alcohol looks like this, positive charge on the oxygen. We are going to use that protonated alcohol to move, uh, to protonate, to use one of these hydrogens, either one of the OH groups, doesn't matter which one. I'm going to pick the one that's closest right there. And you'll see why we're doing that in just a second. So I'm just going to draw, redraw this with the protonated OH group. Like that we've got a positive charge back on that oxygen again. Now what we're going to do is get rid of this leaving group. Um, so that's good, that bond is going to break and for our other OH group one of the lone pairs of electrons on that is going to come in to make a new carbon oxygen double bond. So that is going to look like this. I've relocated this OH group is now being drawn up here. Positive charge on that guy and there's our OR group. 
All that we have left to do is just simply remove the hydrogen from that positively charged oxygen. And we could use another alcohol molecule if we wanted to do that. I'm gonna like just draw a tiny arrow so I can fit this in. Like there's our ester. Um, and we can use, like I said, we could use a second alcohol molecule for this final deprotonation right there. And this is our product of the reaction.